Hi guys, let's learn about the drugs for the treatment of cardiovascular diseases. So when we look at the word cardiovascular disease, just think of heart. Cardio actually stands for heart, and vascular, it actually stands for a network or a system of um, blood vessels. And so if we look over here, if we go to this, actually sorry, before that, this is the um, an introductory video about the heart. It is a nine minute video, but it, the person over here does a really good job explaining the heart. So if you don't remember um, much about the heart, then this video is a great refresher. Okay, so as I was saying, cardio stands for heart, vascular stands for the blood vessels within the heart. And what we're going to learn about is the dental implications of cardiovascular disease. So if we have someone who's got heart issues, we're going to look at whether we can treat them or not. And we're also going to note that anyone who has heart problems, they could be in a variety of drugs. And we'll look at all of these drugs. So when you hear the word cardiovascular disease, there are many things that it could mean. Cardiovascular disease could mean hypertension, which is high blood pressure. It could mean angina pectoris, which means chest pain. It could be coronary artery disease, where the arteries are clogged up. It could be stroke, or it could be congestive heart failure. So these are all different types of cardiovascular disease. So why is this important for dental treatment? Well, one of the reasons why it's important is if someone has had a heart attack, so myocardial infarction is a fancy name for heart attack, we have to wait six months, so six months before we can treat them, before we can do any work on them. Okay, so there's a six month rule. Also, anytime someone has uncontrolled, okay, so any uncontrolled heart condition, and when I say uncontrolled or unstable, what that means is that their blood pressure is probably not stable, so it's extremely high. They tell you that they have to see a doctor every so often because it's unstable, it's uncontrolled. So anytime you have uncontrolled or unstable heart conditions, we need to consult with the doctor before we can do anything um, intraorally, before we can go and look inside their mouth. So anytime it's significant uncontrolled high blood pressure, or if they have uncontrolled heartbeats, uncontrolled heart failure, uncontrolled, or you know, recently they said that they had chest pains or uncontrolled, any uncontrolled cardiovascular disease, we must, must, must consult with the doctor. So send the doctor a letter, what we call a medical consultation. We must do a medical consultation before we can go ahead and treat them. And again, this is a really, really important. So six months before, we have to wait six months before dental treatment. So when someone is given local, and one of the ingredients in local anesthetic is a vasoconstrictor, it's epinephrine. Epinephrine is a vasoconstrictor. And we like to give epinephrine to people because what happens is when we give them epinephrine, the blood vessels, it constricts. So this is a big, it's dilated, it's open, and now here you can see it's small, it's constricted, and that's better. The reason why the blood vessels constrict is because of epinephrine. And the reason why we like it is because when the blood vessels constrict, the numbness stays in that area for a longer period of time. If we don't put epinephrine, the numbness will just uh, go away quickly. So epinephrine keeps the local anesthetic in that area for a longer period of time. So what do you do with someone who's got heart conditions? Because remember, when someone has heart conditions, we like to vasodilate the blood vessels. We want to open it so the blood can flow. If we vasoconstrict it, if we close up the blood vessels, that is harder for the blood to flow and go through the heart. So what we say is that anytime someone has a heart condition, we still do give them epinephrine, but we lower or limit the dose. So instead of 2 milligram, we'll give them 0.04 milligram. Okay, so we're limiting the dose. We're still giving them epinephrine, but we're limiting the dose to 0.04 milligram. People used to say, I know when I was school, um, I was taught that if someone has cardiovascular disease or if someone has heart problems, they have a higher chance of getting periodontal disease. Um, now, research is uh, conflicting. There are some research that says that yes, um, if you have cardiovascular disease, you will get a higher chance of periodontal disease. And others say no, it's, there's no research or there's no proof to show that there is a link. So there's conflicting results, so we're just saying that the research still continues, we still don't know. 
However, if someone does have cardiovascular disease, we're still going to encourage them to, you know, come regularly for cleaning, floss their teeth, just like we would to any other clients. So cardiovascular disease, one type of cardiovascular disease is heart failure. And heart failure basically means when the heart does not pump like it normally would. So when someone has heart failure, when someone's heart is not working, there's a variety of medications we could give them. And we're going to look at each of these, med these medications. So there's diuretics. This is kind of known as a water pill. So if someone is, um, has lots of fluid in their body where they feel very, um, like, you know, when your feet get swollen up and maybe you have lots of water in your feet, one of the reasons, underlying reasons could be because of a possible heart failure. We'll look at that later on. Then there's something called angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. I know it sounds fancy, short way, or a short way of saying that is ACEI or ACE inhibitors. There are ARBs and there's beta adrenergic blockers. So we're going to look at those. I know it sounds confusing, but it'll get easier. So way back, the first drug that was um, prescribed for people who have heart condition is called digoxin. Today, digoxin is still used for some people. So today, the way we treat any heart conditions is we, we treat it in many different ways. We don't usually just, just use one medication. Usually, if I had a heart condition, the doctor would prescribe me one, two, three, or four different medications, and they'll try to you know, uh, treat it in many different ways. So one medication the doctor could give me is digoxin. And what digoxin does, is it treats heart failure and it treats arrhythmia. So arrhythmia means abnormal heartbeats, and we'll look at that later on. So digoxin allows for deep contraction. So if your heart isn't contracting the way it should be, it helps it contract more. And if your heart is pumping way too fast, it'll decrease the heart rate. So see D for digoxin, D for deep contraction, D for decreases heart rate. One way to remember is that Think of dig. So this person is digging. So this dig, dig for deeper contraction. So dig deep for deeper contraction. So digoxin, what it does is it creates a deeper contraction of the heart. And that's one medication that someone could take. Now, remember that, um, that digoxin is very toxic. There are lots of um, toxic side effects that could happen. A way to remember that it's toxic is if you look at the ending, it says oxen, which kind of sounds like toxin or toxic. But just remember, toxic effects are very common. Now, if someone is taking digoxin, watch for overdose side effects. So remember, these are side effects that could happen. So GI, so the stomach could get really, really um, upset. They could be vomiting uh, a lot their heart rate could really um, get abnormal. There could be brain effects. So there's lots of effects that could happen. It's very toxic. So we have to keep an eye for side effects. If we're using epinephrine, make sure we use a very um, low dose. Monitor their pulse, because anytime someone has heart conditions, we always take their BP and even their pulse. We want to me measure their pulse as well, just to make sure that it's controlled. Okay, so arrhythmia. So arrhythmia, arrhythmia basically means abnormal rhythm. So this is a normal heartbeat. You can see the peaks, right, when they're, where they're breathing nicely. And an arrhythmia is basically when they skip a beat, maybe. So it's an abnormal rhythm where they're missing a beat, for example. And how do we treat that? Well, there are many, many different ways we can treat that. So let's look at some of them. So there's something called a warfarin, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, we're also, I'm just, just going to focus on the important drugs. There's something called calcium channel blockers, such as phenytoin, and there's something called beta blockers. Okay, so anytime we have someone who's got abnormal heartbeats or abnormal rhythms, if they're anti-arrhythmic, um, anti we need to check for their abnormal or extra heartbeats. So to do that, we need to check their BP, and we also need to check their pulse. So again, Anytime you have someone who has heart conditions, always, always monitor them before starting treatment. Because if they're unstable, then we cannot treat them. 